Hello everyone. Today we decided to shoot a video about the 2023 Turkey Syria earthquake, which has been trending recently on YouTube. Without further ado, let's get to the video. As of March 1st, more than 11,000 aftershocks occurred according to Turkey's Disaster and Emergency Management Authority AFAD. Aftershocks are expected to continue for the foreseeable future. On February 20th, a 6.4 magnitude earthquake killed three people and injured 213 in southern Turkey. On February 27th, a magnitude 5.6 earthquake shook southern Turkey, causing damaged buildings to collapse and killing at least one person. According to ACAPS, new earthquakes are among the worst case scenarios for the region because they could impact humanitarian needs and the ability to meet them. Damaged buildings are at high risk of collapse and survivors may continue to experience ongoing fear while also beginning to deal with lasting trauma. Syria's current complex humanitarian emergency is among the largest humanitarian crises in the world and the earthquake will only exacerbate the situation and vulnerabilities. One obstacle in providing aid quickly in Syria is that the government does not control all of the northwest the area hardest hit by the earthquake. Coordinated assistance by the UN to Syria's northwest arrives across the border from Turkey, while Damascus is where assistance is coordinated within the rest of government-controlled Syria. In northwest Syria, 4.1 million people depend on humanitarian assistance, the majority of whom are women and children. While countries have offered to support Turkey, and the country has disaster management structures to support the response, getting aid to affected Syrians is likely to be more difficult, considering the country is not controlled by one authority. On February 12, Martin Griffiths, the UN's top aid official, said, We have so far failed the people in northwest Syria. They rightly feel abandoned looking for international help that hasn't arrived. The UN says it is scaling up its cross-border aid operation. As of February 14, three border crossing points were opened for UN aid delivery, Bab al-Hawa, Bab al-Salam and al -Arayi. As of March 24, more than 1,000 trucks loaded with aid had crossed into northwest Syria since February 9. However, hostilities in the region have largely remained since the disaster, prompting accusations that life-saving aid was being politicized. According to a REACH rapid assessment involving 604 communities in northwest Syria, winterization, shelter and multi-purpose cash support were cited as the top priority. Following the earthquake, a dam collapsed in northwestern Syria causing the overflow of the Orontes River. The flood led to the displacements of people from the village of Altlol in the Idlib Governorate. Approximately 7,000 people were evacuated, and 1,000 houses flooded across the nearby villages of Hardana, Delbiya, Jakara, and Hemziya. On March 15, Floods caused by heavy rains resulted in the deaths of 15 people in the southern Turkey provinces of Sanlıurfa and Adıyaman. Two people died in Adıyaman when waters swept away a container home where a group of earthquake survivors was living. Some people were evacuated from a waterlogged campsite where earthquake survivors were sheltering in tents. On March 18, heavy rainfall and storms affected northwest Syria destroying around 600 tents and damaging 897. Most of these tent sites were created for displaced people following the earthquakes. The floods are an example of an indirect and cascading disaster impact that humanitarians must account for while trying to minimize risk as they provide assistance and begin recovery. The displaced population affected by the dam collapse and subsequent flooding is partially returning. 
However, the dam cannot be repaired immediately, and people are at risk of catching waterborne diseases. Earthquakes are among the most devastating natural hazards. Turkey's two main fault zones make the region one of the most seismically active in the world. Natural hazards only become disasters when they interact with a human society or community, referred to as vulnerability in disaster studies. In this disaster, vulnerability looks like poorly constructed buildings that do not meet modern earthquake building standards. Thousands of Syrian refugees in Turkey or displaced people in northwest Syria that live in informal settlements, destruction of infrastructure within Syria after years of war and aerial bombings, an ongoing complex humanitarian emergency in Syria due to conflict, and a cholera outbreak. For these reasons, the earthquake that has devastated Turkey and Syria cannot be called a natural disaster. While natural hazards, such as earthquakes, are inevitable, their impact on society is not. People affected by the disaster know this instinctively due to their lived experience. One shop owner in southern Turkey said, We knew that we lived in an earthquake zone. It's not fate. People are to blame for making weak buildings. Funders can help minimize the impact of this unfolding disaster and additional disasters in Turkey and Syria by advocating for safe building construction, supporting risk communication campaigns, investing over the long term to ensure full recovery that incorporates risk reduction, and strengthening preparedness and resilience. We have come to the end of our topic. We would be very happy if you like the video and subscribe to the channel so that we can shoot videos about such trending topics. Thank you all in advance.